Okay, guys, well, I watched this entire interview, and it's long, with Pierce Morgan and Kevin Spacey. And Kevin Spacey has been doing kind of a press blitz. He's come out finally after all these years, uh, after being accused and actually winning his lawsuits, but being accused of different things. And now he's coming out, and he's finally speaking, and good on him to come out. And the interview overall, I thought he did a really good job of kind of being humble and also showing a lot of regret for what he uh, he was doing uh, in the past to elicit these responses, negative responses from a lot of people that he came in contact with. Okay, now where that all changed was when he got a question about Jeffrey Epstein and a company. So Jeffrey Epstein and that lady, the uh, Maxwell... And, of course, Prince Andrew was in the mix. President Clinton is in the mix. I felt like when he got this question, his demeanor really changed and he became very guarded. Now, I'm not sniping against Spacey or trying to, you know, make any conspiracy theories uh, happen here in this video. I just wanted to see what you guys' opinion was and if you noticed the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to play the portion of the video of interest right now, and I'm going to stop it from time to time when I think there's something that I need to chime in on. And I would appreciate it if you guys chimed in too in the comment section below. Okay, let's go. I want to talk to you about something slightly uh, left field, but your name was attached to another big scandal, which was the Prince Andrew scandal uh, and famously it was reported that you and Ghislaine Maxwell um, were invited to the throne room by Prince Andrew. It then got briefed that you may have been the one who invited Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> Wow. What was the truth I hadn't, about? I hadn't heard that one. This, okay, well, I found it kind of interesting right there where he laughs and claims he had never heard that before. I mean, it was really out there, but I guess it's possible. This is yeah. the, the, throne, the throne room at Buckingham Palace. Just, yes. to, be, just to be clear, mm -hmm. who invited who to this? Okay, right here, it seems like instead of just answering the question, which he's done for most of this very long interview, he kind of goes into a prepared statement not as much a statement but more something that it seemed like if this question came up i was going to say this i was going to frame it this way well let me try to put this in context um before i even get mm. to that um in 2002 i got a call from president clinton who i had become friends with mm. over many years inviting me to come with him on an eight-day humanitarian trip that he was going to make to africa and south africa and I thought it was an incredible opportunity. And apparently he was not having great success with getting people to say yes, because it wasn't like one night in New York. It was eight days in Africa and South Africa. I, the fact that it was primarily to raise awareness uh, and prevention for AIDS, and particularly for mothers who had HIV, to get the medication they needed to not pass it on to their children. Okay, okay, he was doing it for a noble cause. I get that. We get that. Let's continue. So I said yes, absolutely. And in September of 2002, we took off from New York and we went to Ghana and Mozambique and Zimbabwe and R Rwanda and Johannesburg and, and Cape Town. And this was one of the m most incredible experiences I've ever had. Um, the doctors and nurses that we met, the, uh, what we learned about how they were treating patients, the economic development that the president was also talking about in terms of Africa and where it was going to go in the future. Okay, so let's just stop and remember the original question. Did you invite uh, Ghislaine Maxwell? Okay, but yeah, we're going down this whole other road here. Kind of a qualifier maybe or just to set the scene? I don't know. The people we met, we spent a day with Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most extraordinary, um, just an incredible trip. Okay, now keep in mind, this is over an hour into this interview. But for me anyway, it was the first time that I remembered, oh, wait a minute. This guy is a great actor. It meant so much to me. And then the president was invited by Tony Blair to give the speech at Blackpool and the Labor Party conference mm -hmm. that year. What was that? So we flew then to London. And the president said to me, before, before we leave tomorrow, you won't come. I'm going to go to Buckingham Palace tomorrow and see Prince Andrew. You won't come? So I said, I said, sure. So 
I'm a part of the president's party, and there must have been, I think there were 21 guests uh, of the Clinton Foundation when we went to Africa and South Africa. So it was like 18 or so people came to Buckingham Palace that morning. Okay, so right here, he's establishing that there were a bunch of people in the party, okay? That'll play into this thing coming up here real soon. Pay attention. And um, we were wandering through, and there were people who brought us into the throne room, and I sat down, and a bunch of people came and sat down next to me, and a bunch of pictures were taken. And then we went up, and we met Prince Andrew. I'd never met him before and have not seen him since. So that's the context. Then President and I went up to Blackpool. In 2015, I started seeing reports online, things on my Twitter account that I had flown to this guy Jeffrey Epstein's island and I had abused young girls. Okay, well right here he admits to seeing a bunch of stuff online about this happening, but he never heard the massive news that he had invited Maxwell. Okay, whatever, could be. And I was like, I mean, if you'd asked me in 2015, maybe even if you'd asked me in 2002, did I know a guy named Jeffrey Epstein? I probably would have said no. There's a big difference between probably would have said and definitely would have said, don't you think? Well, of course, I have since learned who he is. And I have since been able to go back and find out that the airplane that we flew on for this humanitarian mission was owned by Jeffrey Epstein. And to then learn, oh, he was actually on some of those flights. And this Maxwell woman was on some of those flights. Okay, so this is the part that really got me thinking. I was like, come on, dude, here's the plane, all right? You flew on this jet multiple times. And keep in mind, it is an over 10 hour trip. Are you telling me you didn't know Epstein and Maxwell were on the plane? Obviously, they were very, very friendly with Clinton, but they never came back to see you in the cabin. He completely denies knowing that Epstein was on the plane and only learned later. I didn't know him. I've never spent any time with him. I was with the Clinton Foundation people. That's who I was with. Now, the, what I understand is that he didn't start to be investigated until 2005 by authorities in Florida. Mm -hmm. So here's what I can tell you. <clears throat> this Maxwell woman, she was one of many people who sat down next to me in that throne room. I, I have no relationship with her. I had no relationship with him. I mean, he's not my friend. I'm not a confidant. I've never spent time with him. A a and interestingly, I, I, I will say this. I was very fortunate that President Clinton introduced me a lot of business leaders in London because he knew I was coming to the old Vic. And I developed relationships with Robert Earl, Pula Lodobovich, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, um, Robert Earl, a lot of wonderful mm -hmm. people, uh, Sir Richard Caring, people who supported the work that we did at the Old Vic mm -hmm. and gave money to us. Do you know who I never asked for anything? Was Jeffrey Epstein. I didn't want to be around this guy. Okay, so am I missing something? I thought he didn't know him. How can you not want to be around somebody that you don't know? Because... I felt he put the president at risk on that trip to South Africa because there were these young girls. And we were like, what? who is this guy? So I will say this. There were young girls on those flights. There were young girls on those flights, yeah. And that's been out. They're, they've talked about it. Um, okay, so he knows there's young girls on the flights, but he doesn't know Epstein and Maxwell are on the flights. Okay. But here's my point. <laughs> there's a big difference between not remembering that I met some guy and some woman on a humanitarian trip where my focus was entirely on what we were there to do and not remembering whether I went to somebody's island. So I never went to Jeffrey Epstein's island. I did not know him and I never saw him or her after that morning at Buckingham Palace. He didn't even come to Buckingham Palace. She is, was only is it there. true that Prince Andrew sought your assistance and wanted you to testify that Ghislaine Maxwell was your guest, not his? during that Buckingham Palace I, tour. I, I, I heard a report about that, but at no time did anyone ever contact me on his behalf. Mm -hmm. And I, as I say, I, I'm not friends with him. I never saw him after that day. What do you think about what's happened to him? I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know anything about it. It's not, it's not I'm not gonna talk about someone else's scandal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, is that I had enough uh, accusations of my own to deal with. I don't need to inherit someone else's. 
Okay, well, I'm going to play you some bonus material, I guess you'd call it, because he's done with the Epstein stuff. But now he talks about his relationship with King Charles. I guess it was Prince Charles at that time, but King Charles. And I guess he didn't know Prince Andrew, but he has a substantial relationship with King Charles. So, yeah, check it out. The person I'm told has been very supportive to you in the royal family is actually the king when he was Prince Charles. Is that true? That is true. And when your trouble started, when the scandal blew up, he, he did reach out to you? Uh, no, I haven't heard from him directly, no. But through other people? That may be true. Come on, Kevin, you, you'll know whether that's true or not. Well, he's I, now the king of England. I, I do, but, you know, when you start paying your guests, Pears, then you're going you're gonna to get the... <laughs> But he did contact you. No, he did not contact me directly, no. But he sent a message to you. I, I, I heard a message, yes. And I am very, very grateful for that. A message of support? Yes. That must have meant a lot to you. Yeah, but look, I don't want to drag him into all this. You know, he's... he's, he's, uh, he's uh, well, many people I think, think it was a good, a good thing for him to do. Well, I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying that, you know, he's, he's got a lot on his plate and, and I wish him the very best. But it was a message he wanted you to hear. I, I can't I can't tell you what what he was intending. I don't think I'm getting the full story there, Kevin. I don't think I'm getting the full story there, Kevin. Well, you know, that's because you have your newspaper hat on. Well, I've got my new YouTube hat on. <laughs> your new YouTube hat. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he knighted you. He did. He did. I other was very grateful had, for that. Other people have had night has taken away. That that hasn't happened to you. No, it has not. Are you pleased that it hasn't? I don't know why it would. I don't know why it would. 